Amen. Thank you, Brandon. Beautiful. Good morning, everybody. Buenos dias. Good morning. I hope you're practicing to keep your, your words going because we're going to have, I'm going to expect you to be on target when we get back together, and that will happen. We are working on it. Um, Anyway, it's great to have you with us today. Bienvenidos a todos. We welcome you to Ainsworth United Church of Christ, and we have a multitude of language greetings, so practice up, and if you want to introduce more to me, feel free to put it in writing, because that's the best way I can do it. Um, and we are working. Uh, the, the council has approved a COVID policy. We will be sending you a copy of that but we are going to work on getting people back in the building for in-person worship. Um, at this point, when the children five and up can be vaccinated, and then we're going to require vaccinations for people uh, coming in person. So you will see more about that. Uh, we will still do live stream, so nobody will have to miss out. And if you don't feel quite comfortable to be in person, again, we will live stream uh, the service. It won't be quite the same uh, as we when we all are on Zoom, but it will be, you'll be able to see the worship service and, and be a part of it in that prospect. prospect. 
So again, we're glad to have you with us today. Uh, don't give up. We will overcome this pandemic one way or the other. Um, we also today after worship have a congregational meeting, which you have heard countless times, but I'm just reminding you, we need your voice, we need your, your hearing and your understanding and your voice, so please stay after. It's not a long agenda, but it is an important one. Uh, this evening, they, we have another session with braiding sweetgrass. If you need more information about that, contact Janet Morris. The Chew is happening this Wednesday and will happen through November and December. Um, next Saturday evening, uh, October 30th, we will have game night from 6.30 to 8. And all ages are welcome. It's on Zoom. And we want families, children, adults. We want you to dress up in your costume. We'll have a competition or just wear a mask if you want or something, but be prepared to have fun. We'll play some games and have some fellowship. Um, and then next Sunday, we will have All Saints worship and we are going to carry on our tradition of honoring those who have gone before us. Uh, and we will have the uh, I invite you to have pictures of loved ones, people that you have lost uh, around you next Sunday as we honor them. We will also have our altar, um, our uh, kind of like Dia de los Muertos altar with Aztec marigolds next week. And uh, Shannon Hillis is helping me to do that. So I'm grateful for his help. Um, this morning, we, in, as a lead up to All Saints Day, we, the youth group uh, and Reverend Cecil and I planted, installed the crosses on our church lawn, crosses that we've used every year for the last few years. They did that yesterday, and you will see a video about that. You're welcome to come by the church and see them. In the, and what will be up, we don't have it yet, is a poster that will explain the purpose and reason for the crosses will be posted in the front yard too. We've ordered it, it's not come in yet. So we hope to have that up by midweek. Um, and the person who has, is our liaison with the project of Nos Oblidados, we will remember, um, or not forgotten, you know, it's it, that we are remembering people who have died coming over the border. And uh, our representative or the person that works with churches up here on that project is Gustavo Cermeno, the person who um, is part of the family that we are hosting via Tom Hibschman's place. He has put them up, uh, Gustavo, his wife and daughter, Delia and Vilma, and then also another couple, Javier and Liz have joined them. They are refugees seeking asylum here in the United States. Gustavo is um, a wonderful person and he will be our preacher for the day. Brother Modesto cannot come. He has a, an illness, a family member that he has to attend, had to stay in Southern California to attend to. But I will begin the sermon with more introduction and then we will turn it over to Gustavo. Um, who is here or will be is here at the church uh, with his family. So with that in mind, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. Good morning, everybody. My name is Fred and I will be your liturgist for today on this rainy Sunday morning. We sit on the ancestral homelands of the Multnomah, Kathamith, Clackamas, Tualatin, Kalapuya, Malala, bands of the Chinook, and many others who made their homes along the Columbia River. We honor the members of over 400 tribal communities who live in the Portland metro area. We also want to acknowledge the labor of kidnapped and enslaved Africans and of Chinese workers and of Latinx farm workers who have risked so much and received so little. They have all helped to build the wealth of this country. Please take a moment 
to honor the people who continue to resist and survive despite the intentional and ongoing attempts to destroy them. Please join me in the prayer preparation. As we gather with our community of faith, open our minds and hearts to others around the world. As we seek to connect, help us to feel the presence of those who were sojourners on the road, strangers in a strange land. Remind us that at one time, we were all strangers. Make your spirit fall upon us now, lifting us to be who you have created us to be, to hear your word, your will, and to be strengthened for the journey of discipleship. In the name of the one you sent for us, Jesus Christ, we pray. Our opening hymn is number 389. So I'll do the quick announcement. Okay, there's a little bit of a change here. Uh, first of all, notice that Janet and I are both wearing our singer's masks. We're modeling them for you, choir members. So this is what we'll be using as we begin our ensemble work. Aren't they beautiful? <laughs> um, and they do have a lot of space and room for breathing, so it's great. Um, so we're not doing the uh, refrain twice. We're, we're only gonna do it once, and then we're gonna go back and forth between the refrain and the verses in Spanish, and then we'll do the same thing in English, and then we're gonna end it one last time with the refrain in Spanish, okay? Great, so that's a little bit of a change from what's in the bulletin. All right. Un mandamiento nuevo Jesús nos dio, que nos amemos siempre como nos ama Dios. La señal de cristiandad es amar sin hermandad. Un mandamiento nuevo Jesús nos dio, que nos amemos siempre como nos llamó Dios. Quien al prójimo no ama, miente si Dios dice ama. Un mandamiento nuevo Jesús nos dio, que nos amemos siempre como nos ama Dios. Back to the English, Jesus. Jesus, a new commandment has given us that we should love each other just as God loves us. First English verse. The, the clear sign of all true Christians is the way to the refrain. Jesus, a new commandment has given us that we should love each other just as God loves us. Those who do not love their neighbors do not truly love them. Their Savior, last time refrain in Spanish. Un mandamiento nuevo Jesús nos dio, que nos amemos siempre como nos ama Dios. Amen. 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 Thank you.
And now I invite you to breathe in deeply that healing Holy Spirit. Breathe out, giving up to God all your burdens, all your cares. Oh, loving and gracious God, we give you thanks for the gift of rain because our earth has needed it so much. But we also hold up to you all the people mentioned in our prayers that need your intervention, your healing Holy Spirit, your healing strength upon them. We also lift up to you all those who are houseless and on this cold and wet day. We pray for a will and a way to, to provide homes and living uh, housing for people. And gracious God, we lift up to you so many throughout our world who are in need of healing and strength many who have been spoken about, but more who are on our hearts and in our minds. Gracious God, surround them with your love and care. And loving God, we continue to pray for our world, our earth that is torn apart by devastation. We pray for healing of all creation, for a slowing down of climate change, we pray for a will and a way to, to make things, make healing possible. And loving God, we lift up to you all those people who have been torn from their homes, have had to leave because of violence, because of climate change, because of devastation, disasters, because of dire poverty. We lift them up to you. We pray they find new homes and security wherever they land. We pray they find welcome. And loving God, we lift up these things and so much more as we pray the prayer of our Savior Jesus, saying, Creator God, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. living in interesting times.
interesting and strange times due to the ongoing neglect of our planet our climate is changing at a pace that we never even imagined we are more divided as a society than we've ever been the fear mongers have taken to the streets to announce that we must put an end to a free and democratic education in our country. And this global pandemic keeps on raging. You know, it's in times like these, as we used to say in the Baptist church, that we need a savior. <laughs> and I'm glad that we have a savior in Jesus Christ, amen? amen. But I'm also glad to be part of a church family, a community, a beloved community, such as Ainsworth, that gets it. We get climate change. <laughs> we believe in a free and democratic education. We believe in evidence-based science. And we are open and affirming. And we are advocates for racial justice. Pastor Lynn also reminds us that through all of this, God is always with us. That is why I give my time, my talent, and my financial resources to support this wonderful ministry. Because in times like these, we do need a savior, but we also need a loving faith community, a beloved community, as Dr. Martin Luther King referred to it. God bless Ainsworth, amen. Good, good morning, good morning. There was a time when I was really young that I used to watch a television show called um, Romper Room. And one thing that the um, teacher host used to say was she had a mirror and she said, I can see, and she started naming um, children. And I was convinced that she could actually see the children in, through the television screen in the audience. Well, I'm not like Miss Martha, the teacher at Romper Room, but I do know that there are some children around. I think um, maybe Gustavo's daughter, Vilma, is around. Um, Jeffrey and Cody's daughter, Robin, might be around. Um, Keith and Veronica might be around. Jania is. But need be around. Jania is around. And uh, lots of people are all around. So can I add, yeah. Cecil, that, um, well, and I'm hoping Nylee is around somewhere, but who knows. But Sarah is around and Aman and their little boy, perhaps. But Sarah also has another child in her and she's celebrating her 24 weeks of pregnancy. So, so uh, we, we celebrate that addition to our church and pray all goes well as they come out. Thank you, Cecil. Me and Nadia are here. Oh, okay. Nola and Nadia are here as well. Okay. Well, I have a couple of questions, and you may shout them out um, as you think of them or, or raise your hand. So have you ever um, flown on, on an airplane? Yes? No? Some have. Great. Yes. Yes. Okay. Have you ever seen anyone wear an outfit from their home country that looks different from the outfit you wear or your friends wear? Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay, and one last question. Can you think about a time that you or some other share something with someone else or someone shared something with you? Yes. Okay, great. So 
I want to show you, I think, a couple of, a few pictures about people with different costumes, or not costumes, or outfits. And this is pictures of some women in Palestine with the wonderful outfits that they have on. And here are some other pictures of people with some wonderful, colorful outfits that they have on. And here are some young women with outfits that are a little bit different than you might see in, in your neighborhood. And finally, here are some young people dancing. And I'm sharing this because I want to tell you that they are dancing, that they are dancing in Sheep's Field near where Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Oh, Bethlehem, I want to tell you to look forward to our Christmas pageant. And Jeannie LaFrance and Grace and I will be sending you some notice of Christmas pageant rehearsal this coming week. So think of who you might like to be, what you would like the Christmas pageant to be about. And we're going to have some fun times together doing it. So look for it or ask your adults, um, did you get that email about the Christmas pageant and rehearsal? So I just want to share uh, a short story about people who are, were at the airport and what happened to them. So wandering around the Albuquerque airport, after learning my flight had been delayed for four hours, a young woman said that she heard an announcement. It said, if anyone is in the vicinity of gate A4, understand Arabic, Please come to the gate immediately. Well, one paused these days because they're not quite sure what's going to happen. And this woman said, oh, gate four, that's my gate. So I will go there. She got to the gate and she saw an older woman in full traditional Palestinian embroidered dress, like the dresses we saw just a few minutes ago. And she said, this woman dressed just like my grandma. But this woman, this older woman was crumbled on the floor, wailing and crying. And the flight attendant said, help, talk to her. What is her problem? We told her that the flight was going to be late and she did this. And this woman knelt down, put her arms around the woman who was crying and spoke in, in, in broken Arabic, Sudoa, Shubiku Abiti, Stanik Suey, Min Falik, Shubit Siwi. And the minute this older woman heard these words that she knew, however poorly spoken, and the woman stopped crying. She was crying because she thought that her flight had been canceled and she needed to be in El Paso for a major medical treatment the next day. And the younger woman who came to her said, no, we're fine. You'll get there just later. Who's picking you up? Let's call him. And she told her in Arabic that her son was picking her up. 
And so they called her son and she spoke to her son in English and told him that she was staying with her mother till the plane got, to, until she got on the plane and right next to her. The mother talked to her son. And she, all the other sons came and talked on the phone and suddenly hearing the voices of her loved one, this older woman started to feel a little bit calmer. And in a little while, people were laughing and talking and talking about their lives. And this older woman had a sack of homemade mumu cookies. Now those are little powder cookie crumbly mounds stuffed with dates and nuts. And she had them in her bag and she offered them to all the people in the gate. And you know what? Everyone began to share and happy and sing and have fun. And so what began as a moment of fear, because this woman did not know what would happen and she did not understand the language, became a time when people began to laugh and share and eat those lovely cookies together. And I think this is a reminder to all of us that although we may be different and we may not understand one another, that we are called to share and be kind to one another. So next time you are in an airport and you might see someone who's worried, maybe you will ask your, the adult with you, um, maybe there's something that's wrong with that person. Maybe you can see what's wrong with them. Or maybe on the schoolyard or in the class. But wherever we are, we can always share and be kind to one another. So thank you for listening and thank you for sharing and look forward to news about the Christmas patch. Thank you. And if you'd like to join Sunday School, put it in the chat. I will put you in the Sunday School. Thank you. Ready?
you so much, Diana, Brandon, and Kayla. Our Hebrew scripture this morning comes from Deuteronomy chapter 10, verses 12 and verses 17 through 22. Verse 12. So now, O Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? Only to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all his ways, to love him, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Verses 17 through 22. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, the great God, mighty and awesome, who is not partial and takes no bribe, who executes justice for the orphan and the widow, and who loves the strangers, providing them food and clothing. You shall also love the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Egypt. You shall fear the Lord your God. Him alone you shall worship. To him you shall hold fast, and by his name you shall swear. He is your praise. He is your God, who has done for you these great and awesome things that your own eyes have seen. Your ancestors went down to Egypt 70 persons, and now the Lord your God has made you as numerous as the stars in heaven. Our epistle reading comes from Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, and verses 9 through 18. Verses 1 and 2. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Verses 9 through 18. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. And that is your word for this morning. Gustavo is no stranger. I know I titled the sermon, The Story of a Stranger. According to the Bible, Gustavo would be considered a stranger. Because, so I wanted to use the words from the Bible to help prepare us so we could hear that scripture and know how it pertains to us. But Gustavo is no stranger. He is family. And... Um, until he was known to us through Tom offering his home, Tom Hipschman, we didn't know him. We didn't know Delia. We didn't know Vilma. So they were considered strangers. And as Christians, it is clear in, in the scriptures that we welcome strangers. So we welcome them. Tom welcomed them into his home. And then also welcomed Javier and Liz offering them hospitality, a home, a place. 
The scriptures also tell us to offer hospitality to sojourners, those coming through by us and, and uh, around us, to feed the hungry and take care of those people in need. We all know that. And what the Bible also reminds us through so many stories is that there are refugees all around us. Throughout the Bible, there were refugees. Jesus and his family were refugees to Egypt. They fled their home to save his life. They fled and found home for a time in Egypt. So just as they fled, Gustavo fled, and so many others. And each person who is in a web of migration has a story. Each has reasons to give up so much. Each is willing to risk their minds, their li risk their lives, and all that is familiar with them for the possibility of life, the possibility of survival and security in a new life, in a strange place. And what the Bible doesn't explicitly say is that the stranger has much to give the one offering hospitality and care. I don't recall seeing that in the Bible, but we I can certainly testify to that, that when we open ourselves up to strangers to, and make them no longer strangers, but friends and family, they have so much to give to us. They are a gift, and Gustavo is a gift to this church this community, this state. He's a gift for all, and, 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 and anyone we welcome can be a gift for all who are willing to open ourselves up to them, to open up our homes, to open up our lives to share, and to help make that person no longer a stranger. So I invite and welcome Gustavo to the pulpit no longer a stranger, he is a gift. <clears throat> well, first, hi, good morning. My name is Gustavo, and uh, well, <laughs> I'm kind of nervous, but you have no idea how I feel today to share my story. And maybe it's not just my story. Maybe it could be someone else's story. There is a thousands of people that is around the border like me. So I want to take this like the promised land for me, because actually it is. And it starts like this. My name is Gustavo Sermeño, and my story began on September 14, 2018, when I left my country fleeing for gang members who wanted to kidnap me, wanted to extort me and treat me or more, uh, murder my son. I have to leave my country, my family, and everything behind without thinking twice. Along the way, I met a beautiful woman that now, day by day, is basically my fiance and is the mother of my beautiful daughter, who is Vilma, uh, who is one and four months years old. Um, well, with Delia, we've been through a lot of things. We live in Chiapas for around six months. We were suffering a lot because uh, the police in Mexico, I don't want to say that it's the worst, but maybe it's the most corrupt that I, have, that I have never seen, believe it or not. We were trying to say something to the police, but the police was in the same path with the cartels, so you're not able to trust in them. I remember that one day we were in the Beast, which is a train. Uh, I know that you already maybe know something about the, the Beast. And we were 
and the very top on the roof of the train. And I tied myself to the train with my bell. And I was tied in Delia because if you fall asleep, maybe you can fall down on the train. And I saw one of the persons that fell down on the train and the train cut his legs. It's something that one day maybe I'll be able to forget, but not for today, because today basically is to share the story of many people that they are, they are still trying and they had tried to cross Mexico and the border, even the desert. And the reason that we are here all, uh, also commemorating the crosses in front of the church is to commemorate all the lives that they're lost in the, in the journey to have the promised land. And it's kind of difficult because I've been one of them. One of the story is a Salvadorian that basically lost his life and his daughter's life in the river, in the Bravo River. I don't know if you heard about it, but it's a, a huge story. The Salvadorian tied um, his daughter to on his back with a shirt. He was my friend from El Salvador. And now I'm, I'm I'm being here because I want to say something about it. I mean, in my town, in my country, we have a paragraph that says, if the baby doesn't cry, nobody is going to feed it. And now it's my turn. It's our generation turn. Because now we need to say something and see if the government, the U.S. government, or the president maybe can do something about, about us, about the families that they have been waiting in the border for around two or three years. Also, the other side of the, of the crosses project that we have in front now, in front of the church, is the water project. We have some certain points, specific points, that we put water around the desert. So if for some reason someone needs water, we can say basically save their lives just with a cup of water in the middle of the desert. We're trying to do something that maybe my daughter in the future is gonna continue. And now my generation or the generation behind me, maybe we need to do something and we need your help. That's the reason that I'm here. And I want to thank Tom Hitchman, Mr. Modesto, that is having a problem with his relative, is having a hard time in the hospital. And I, I've been praying for his relative. And I want to thank the church and Pastor Lynn for giving us the chance to talk about this and share a little bit about our story and about the story of many persons that they are in the borders and in the shelters. Thank you so much. And thanks, God, because now I got my dream come true. That is the promised land. I'm here, and I can say that even one day, we were trying to cross the border, and the CVP put an injection, a vaccine into my, into my fiance, because we used the last day of the pregnancy period and they didn't want us here. So they put a vaccine or an injection to retain or hold my baby into the bell. And that caused a problem because my baby was born with a lot of problems. My baby was blue one week before of the nine months, after the, the nine months. So, now it's my story, and that could be another story from someone else. But I want to share it, and I want to thank God, because I'm here telling the story. So maybe we can do something about it in the future. Thank you so much, and thanks, God, for your time.
to make it harder When steeples out of stone Fill books with explanation of the way But if we'd stop and listen And break a little bread Thank you, Dinah, Brandon, Caleb, Marvin, and Janet for the gift of music. And thank you to Gustavo for sharing your story. We welcome you and your family. Helping strangers is one of the things we try to do here at Ainsworth United Church of Christ. After all, it is the Christian thing to do. So help us to continue to do this work by giving your offerings and donations. We can't continue to do it without your help. You can donate online at united at ainsworthucc.org. You can also donate uh, through bill pay and you can also uh, mail in your payment or bring in your payment to the church. Thank you so, so much for your support. Please join me in the offertory prayer. Gracious God, we are blessed with so much. Please receive these offerings, some of the blessings you have given us. May they multiply and bring new life and nurture in our broken world. We give these in the name of Jesus who called us to serve. Amen. 